which is Dr. Grassian from the University of Iowa, who will be discussing a subject that is uh, somewhat altered by reality from her original intention. <laughs> that is, I changed the title of my talk. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, I've changed the title of my talk, and I'd like to talk today about um, FTIR spectroscopy of adsorbates on supported metal catalysts. This work is being done at the University of Iowa, and I've had a number of graduate students and undergraduates working on this project, and this is mainly the work of uh, Catherine McGee and my group, and this work is supported by the NSF, the ACS, and the GE Foundation. Um, specifically, what I want to talk about is the study of uh, the reactions of ethyl chloride and platinum silica. And I'm going to talk about thermal and photon driven chemistry. So, we're interested in looking at ethyl chloride absorbed on platinum silica and what happens when we photon uh, drive this reaction as well as what happens when this reacts thermally. Well, you might ask yourself, why are you interested in studying ethyl chloride on the surface? Well, um, there's been a lot of work in the area of um, ultra-high vacuum and single crystal work where alkyl halides have been used as precursors for the formation of alkyl groups. And here I show you um, for the formation of um, um, a variety of different systems where we start off with an absorbed species at low temperature. When we heat the temp, when we um, increase the temperature to around 150 to 200 Kelvin, we see the bond breaking, the Ri bond breaking and you can form a variety of fragments on the surface, as well as phenyl and vinyl, and these alkyl groups that I have here. Alternatively, this can be driven with uh, photons, and if you start off with an alkyl chloride or bromide, you can also induce the chemistry with photons. And the role of the halogen atom in the chemistry of these alkyl groups, to first approximation, <coughs> it's simply a site blocker. So you just can't get high coverage on these because these um, halogen atoms are also absorbed on the surface. Now, I think the field of metal surface photochemistry has been fascinating. There have been a lot, a lot of work done in this field in the last seven years. And what I find fascinating is that um, if you look at the reaction of, for example, a methyl halide, a photochemical reaction, what happens is you break the CX bond. On a surface, the photon energy needed to break this bond is much less than in the gas phase. And I think that there have been a number of examples of this, and I'll show you a, a, a table of this. The reason is, is that the thought is that substrate excitation is, a, is important in this chemistry and is the cause of the redshift. And I have a general reaction here, whereas we start off with um, AB, uh, diatomic, let's say, if you excite with light, you get transfer of an electron from the metal to the adsorbate. And if this electron resides in an anti-bonding orbital, you can expect to see bond association. Then you get renutralization to give you A plus B. You can think of this as an electron transfer chemistry, electron transfer mechanism. And here I have a specific reaction for methyl bromide on a surface to give you methyl groups plus bromine, bromine atoms. So the substrate is playing a role in the surface photochemistry. And I've taken the liberty of um, collecting some of these numbers from the literature. Um, looking at the photodissociation threshold of the adsorbed molecule versus the gas phase. These numbers derived from gas phase are based on gas phase absorption cross sections. And I think you can see that there's a large shift between the gas phase values and the adsorbed molecule. For example, if you look at methyl bromide, we see 4.6 electron volts in the gas phase for the bond dissociation <coughs> energy. And this shifts down to about 3 electron volts on, on silver. Um, most of these for one monolayer coverage, and we see that the effective coverage, and this is the work of uh, um, Mike White at Texas, um, is that it, we have a change in the threshold and it goes up by 0.5 eV. Also from this table, again looking at methyl bromide, we can see that it's important, that it's a function of the metal, and we see that copper, there's a huge shift of about two electron volts, or at least what I would call a huge shift. Um, if we look down here at um, chlorobenzene, this is some of the work that we've done. In the gas phase, we've measured this to be around 3.8 electron volts. When it's absorbed on silver 111, we see a shift to 3.5 eV, so that's a 0.3 electron volt shift. And we saw the following, which we were, we were um, interested in seeing, was the effect of uh, surface morphology on this threshold, and we see it even decreases greater to about 3.2 electron volts. 
I also included oxygen on here. It's just not limited, limited to um, halogenated hydrocarbons, these shifts from the gas phase. And if you notice, those numbers um, are now energies where um, solar wavelengths can cause dissociation of these bonds when they're absorbed on the metal surface. And we didn't, that's not true in the case of the gas phase. So it's, they, these thresholds are shifted in the, to the solar spectrum. So you can start thinking about what I have here is photoassisted catalysis, where in step one, you simply have absorption of a molecule onto the surface. Step two, you have reaction, but this is a photon-driven reaction. And then step three, we have desorption. So this is a, exactly analogous to um, a, a heterogeneously catalyzed reaction, where um, in step two, we have a photoassisted step. And these are at photon energies, which would not cause trans transformation in the gas phase. You need the presence of the metal surface. So what we're doing um, is the following. People have been working in single crystal, on single crystal metal surfaces in ultra-high vacuum. And that's a great environment in which to learn fundamental aspects of surface photochemistry. And now we've started doing some work in the area of these um, oxide-supported metal catalysts where you have higher surface area. So if you're going to have a practical uh, photoassisted catalyst, it would be these types of dispersed systems. These particles are nanometer-sized particles, and there's been predictions in the literature that you would get enhancement in the photochemistry. <clears throat> So here's an infrared spectrum of methyl chloride absorbed at 210 Kelvin, pressure of 8 torr, um, equilibrium pressure of 8 torr. Um, up here is the gas phase spectrum. Here's the spectrum of ethyl chloride absorbed on silica. Here's the spectrum of ethyl chloride absorbed on platinum silica. You can see that uh, the silica hydroxyl groups are involved in bonding to ethyl chloride. Um, we've subtracted out the gas phase band so we can look at the absorbed molecule. And you really can't see much difference between uh, the silica and the platinum silica spectrum, the two spectra. So what that suggests is that um, the molecule is not uh, distorted much from, from that of bonding on the platinum. And so basically we're just having overlapping bands. We see a little bit of an increase in the width of the bands for the platinum silica um, data. <clears throat> Upon evacuation at 210 Kelvin, the um, bands disappear and we get reversible absorption. Okay, so we propose that the bonding of ethyl chloride is the following on this surface. On the silica surface, we're getting the hydrogen bonding, and we can see that from the um, hydroxyl group region. On the platinum surface, um, we're basically we don't have direct evidence for that. All we know is that the molecule is not distorted much from the gas phase or from at least that bonding to silica. And so we just propose that the halogen atom is interacting with the platinum, as people have determined from uh, UHV uh, single crystal uh, surface photochemistry, uh, single crystal work. Uh, the experiment that we do is we have the equilibrium pressure of gas in the chamber and into the, the IR cell, and we excite with broadband light, a 200 watt um, medium pressure mercury arc lamp. And we um, shine light on that sample, and on one half of the sample we have platinum silica, and the other side we have silica, so we can see the effect of the um, support, if there is any, and we can also see the chemistry in the platinum. We also have a tunable laser source, and. We can do these experiments with monochromatic light to determine thresholds fairly easily, and we have we use typically very low um, laser power, so we don't do any uh, thermal chemistry. This is the spectrum obtained <clears throat> after 180 minutes of photolysis in the presence of um, gas phase ethyl chloride. And we've evacuated out the sample to remove the weakly bound ethyl chloride. And we see the following spectrum on the platinum silica side. And we see the, these bands, which we'll um, identify in a moment. And on the silica side, we don't see much happening okay, at these wavelengths after three hours of photolysis. So it looks like we're, we're proposing that analogous to the single crystal work, where we see 
CCL bond cleavage to give ethyl groups and chlorine atoms. On the platinum silica surface, we're doing surface photochemistry on these nanometer sized platinum particles where we form ethyl groups plus chlorine. And that platinum is playing a role in the photochemistry because ethyl chloride is transparent at these wavelengths. So what's our evidence for ethyl groups on the surface? Well, our evidence is the infrared data that we have. And here what I have is the assignment of the ethyl groups formed from photolysis of ethyl chloride, and that's our work here in this column. And I've compared that to the electron energy loss data obtained for ethyl groups absorbed on platinum 111. And also, um, more importantly, or I should say more helpful, because of the higher resolution of infrared spectroscopy, the um, ethyl group ethyl groups formation, formation on platinum silica from partially hydrogenating ethylene, and that's the work of um, Professor Shepard. They introduced a small amount of hydrogen, and they proposed that they form ethyl groups on the surface. We see that the agreement between our bands and Professor Shepard's bands are quite good. There's largest discrepancy is here, about 12 wave numbers, here about 11 wave numbers. So we feel like we have good evidence that we're forming these ethyl groups on the surface. We can photolyze for longer periods of time, start to build up um, a larger amount of ethyl groups, so then we can go on and study the chemistry of these groups on the surface. This band here at 1340 wave numbers is due to a thelidine, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few moments. And so um, we see that we can make a fair amount of these groups on the surface and then study their chemistry, and we're currently um, working on that. Um, these are the growth curves um, obtained after time.
platinum silica composite and it's got an average dielectric function, but as I said earlier, if you just have silica, you just get a, a mm -hmm. change in the background due to scatter. The silica is necessary for this platinum particle to absorb uh, new people because uh, Mike White has done, I mean, has Mike, I can't remember who, who has quite done what, but if you have a single crystal surface mm -hmm. and you put, uh, they put things on and, and mm -hmm. totalize, right. what, what are the results of that? I, how does that compare to what you have? Um, well, that's what we're doing now. We're just making these. Okay. And, and what you see on the single crystal work is a decrease in the photo dissociation threshold, and that's because the metal is absorbing light, and in fact, um, I'm going to electrotransmit to be absorbing. So the metal is participating in the photochemistry, mm -hmm. um, not the silica so much. The silica mm -hmm. is just used as a support mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. Okay, so you think your mechanism is probably much the same as that? It's the the data suggests that, and so we're trying to do further work to mm -hmm. determine that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's very helpful. Nice. Are there any other questions? Well, uh, if not, uh, we will reconvene.